it would have to be the, the poem that she taught her students when she was still an English teacher. And it was, the title of this poem is Be Strong, which connotes keep going, be faithful to the, whatever task it is that you assume. Be strong. We are not here to play, to dream, to drift. We have hard work to do it and loads to lift. Shun not the struggle, face it, tis God's gift. Be strong. Say not the days are evil, who's to blame? And fold the hands in aqueous, oh shame. Stand up, speak out, and bravely in God's name. Be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong. It matters not how deep entrenched the wrong, how hard the battle goes, the day how long. Fate not, fight on, tomorrow comes a song. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Lucy Digslow was born to Henry Slow and Fanny Porter Slow in Berryville, Virginia on July 4th in 1885. Tragedy struck the family just six months later when Henry, a hotel proprietor, died. Tragedy continued to follow the family. Shortly after Lucy turned five, she lost her mother and the seven children were orphaned. Lucy's aunt, Martha Slow Price, took the siblings in and raised them. When Lucy was 13, the family moved to Baltimore, Maryland, so that Lucy and her siblings could attend the Baltimore Colored High School. Despite these challenges, Lucy graduated second in her class in high school and became the first from the school to go to Howard, receiving an academic merit scholarship. Education must fit African American women as it must fit all women for the highest development of their own gifts, but whatever those gifts, they will not be able to exercise them unless they understand the world they live in and are prepared to make their contribution to it. Lucy digs slow. Slow had an illustrious career at Howard. After entering, she dedicated herself to excellence in academics and athletics. She was also incredibly involved, founding and presiding over sororities and organizations, and working as a clerk to pay her tuition at Howard. One of her crowning moments at Howard as an undergraduate was her participation in founding the sorority Alpha Kappa Alpha, the first sorority for African American women. She developed the first draft of the Constitution for AKA and served as a dedicated member and the sorority's first president. She also joined the Alpha Pi Literary Society and served as its vice president and secretary. Slow had an extensive career in tennis and was the president of the Women's Tennis Club at Howard. In 1908, Slow graduated from Howard University with a bachelor's in arts degree in English. Her recognition as valedictorian of her graduating class was further proof of her dedication to excellence. After graduating from Howard, Lucy Diggs Slow began teaching at Douglas High School in Baltimore. In 1911, she continued her education by studying English and student personnel of the Teachers College at Columbia. This experience, coupled with her administration and teaching in the secondary education system, would prepare her for her future roles in higher education. In 1915, Slow received her master's degree in English from the Teachers College at Columbia. After obtaining her master's degree, Slow moved to Washington, D.C. to teach at Armstrong Manual Training School. Simultaneously, she continued her impressive tennis career, becoming a 17-time tennis champion, and won the first American Tennis Association's National Women's Championship in 1917, becoming the first African American woman to win a national title in any sport. Pop Quiz Which famous African American, later known as the Jackie Robinson of tennis, did Lucy Diggs Slow pave the way in tennis for? A. Athea Gibson B. Tally Holmes C. Dr. R. Walter Johnson or D. Arthur Ashe the answer is A. Lucy Diggs Slow is known for breaking the color barrier for female athletes in tennis, paving the way for Athea Gibson to become the Jackie Robinson of tennis. In 1919, Slow helped create Shaw Junior High School, 
the first junior high school for African Americans in Washington, D.C., and was offered the job of principal for the school. Here, she gained the administrative experience she would need for the rest of her career. She gave the school organization by developing curriculum and planning training systems. She served Shaw until 1922, when she was hired as a professor of English at Howard University. Lucy Diggs-Slow was truly an inspiration and an avid supporter of women's rights, specifically African-American women who sought college degrees. Not only was she the first permanent African-American Dean of Women at Howard University, but she was also a founder of the National Association of College Women, known as NACW. During her 15-year tenure at Howard, she started a Dean of Women's Club, which offered a Dean of Women's perspective to young women, which was centered on independence. She instituted the Women's Students League, an organization to which all women students at Howard automatically belong to upon registering at the university. The purpose of the group was to develop student leadership. The league was comprised of various committees to increase fellowship and intelligent leadership on the campus and in the community. As the president of NACW, her goal was to improve the living standards, academics, and provide leadership opportunity to African American women on campus. Slow was a firm believer in women thinking and acting independently. In 1930, the NACW approached Howard University about offering courses in social work. Slow worked towards this goal for four years, from 1931 to 1935, to have such courses offered. Finally, in 1935, Howard began offering courses in social service through its sociology department. Another goal was to improve the living conditions for women. Slow was able to get three female residence halls built in 1931. Living on campus was important to her because dorms were educational environments that promoted togetherness and social development. During the time she was at Howard, she faced many obstacles. She especially had trouble with the president of the university, Mordecai Johnson, who was opposed towards Slow's unprejudiced attitude of women. Also, it was difficult for women in general to receive respect from male colleagues and for a dean of women to be viewed as professionals. In 1929, the National Association of Deans of Women and Advisors to Girls in Negro Schools was founded by Slow and some of her closest associates with the intention to unify efforts for advancement of black female students and their advisors. Five goals were identified at the formation and remained at the core of the organization until it merged with the National Association of Personnel Deans and Advisors of Men in Negro Institutions to create the National Association of Personnel Workers in 1954. Those goals were Number one. Number one, the creation and maintenance of adequate on-campus housing for female college students, which was a lifetime passion for SLO. Number two, well-planned extracurricular activities for female students on campus to both endear them to the institution and to enrich their lives outside of classes. Number three, separate housing and advising for high school females attending school on college campuses so they received a different sort of attention than their college female peers. Number four, female deans and advisors to women needed to be both properly trained in student personnel work and be salaried to be successful. Number five, there was a lack of representation of women, especially women of color, on boards of trustees and an institutional administration across the board, which needed to change. The creation and continual existence of the National Association showed a commitment to nationwide improvement for black female students. The improvement of living conditions and the quality of advising was essential to improved academic achievement and retention. Slow spent most of her career focused on those improvements. And in 1933, she published her paper, Higher Education of Negro Women, to share the culmination of her years of effort and work towards the betterment of college life for her students. The article provides a framework for improvement through suggested changes in organization and curriculum. Slow speaks out openly against segregation by gender and race in higher education, citing that the seven best colleges and universities for white students at the time were far and above the three top schools for black students. 
it was a principal problem for the advancement of black female students that they were barred from receiving their education from those top schools. Another problem that she identified in her paper was the extremely high number of black female students who are pursuing education degrees over any other field. She did not degrade the education field, but she rallied for increased diversification in program enrollment among her students, encouraging them to learn political science and economics, which she saw as essential to understanding and succeeding in modern life. Slow's work also promoted the building of initiative in black female students. She shared research that many came from conservative households in terms of the roles women should take on and from communities that refused to allow them to engage, both politically and socially. She supported campus activities and programs, women's leagues and student government, to name a few, that she saw as essential to meet her desire for black women to assert their independence and to never settle for becoming an adjunct to a man. The fulfillment of that wish was ultimately her largest accomplishment in life as she changed the student affairs landscape through tireless hours of advising and writing during her career. Lucy Dick Slow was also instrumental in the founding of the National Council of Negro Women in 1935. She served as the secretary for the council. Her leadership proved so instrumental that when she succumbed to kidney failure, the group faltered. They did not meet again for several years and nearly disbanded without her presence as the crucial linchpin in their leadership. The group's aim was to bring African-American women together to solve problems within their communities and promote those issues to the national stage. The group still exists today under the same name and the same goal, leading, developing, and advocating for African-American women. It promotes these goals through public education and community service, as well as sponsoring events that promote community excellence. Many honors have been bestowed upon Lucy Dick Slow posthumously to commemorate her achievements. The oddest is that a tunnel boring machine in Washington, D.C. sewer revitalization project is named Lucy after her, punching through stone and soil to forge on. The most heartwarming one is that one of the dormitories at Howard University was named after her and originally housed female graduate students and is now co-educational. The school's chapel also has a stained glass window memorializing her time and work at the school. So widespread was her effect on the people that knew her that at the time of her death in 1935, the church that had been selected for her service was far too small to accommodate the immense number of students, friends, and family members, and trustees who desired to pay their respects. The extreme outpouring of grief and countless public declarations of mourning at her passing only further proves how well-loved and respected she was. Her kind heart and relentless work ethic changed the world of higher education for the better and enabled so many more to go on to reach their full potential. I saw a woman who had pioneered in the very field in which I had prepared myself. Back then, it was called student personnel work. It was preparing, it was the field that prepared people to become something that folks haven't heard of these days, a dean of women, a dean of men, or guidance counselor. And that's what Lucy Slow had been. And so had Carol Miller. And so he was furthering information about her in a field that embraced all of us. So I said, I know this field and I've got to do it for him and for the sake of the field.